What is going on everybody? Today I want to share with you guys how I went from this cooler to this cooler. That's right, I've been getting your emails and I've been seeing your comments and today I'm going to share with you guys my full review of the catch counter. So let's do this thing. Now in case you guys haven't already guessed what the catch counter does, well, let me fill you in. It counts your fish. Amazingly simple concept really, but let me tell you something, no one's done it like these guys. This thing is not only versatile, but it's solid and it's the perfect addition to any serious pan fisher's boat. So first let's go over the design of the catch counter. So this thing is made of a super durable ABS plastic and there's no question that this thing holds up to wear and tear. So we've been using these things hard this season in central Florida and it's worked like a charm. And this thicker plastic that it's made of makes it super easy to clean after a day full of running fish through it. Just use a rag, a sponge, some warm soapy water, give it a once over, done dealio. So they call this thing the Mega Mouth. And that's because the chute on this is actually 60% larger than its predecessors. And while I've mainly been putting slab crappy through it this season, it could easily handle big old copperhead bluegills, trout, bass, and a ton of other fish. And so that's one thing you want to keep in mind before you mount this on any particular cooler. Think about the variety of fish that you plan on targeting. And what I mean by that is bigger fish, bigger cooler. So behind the chute of the Mega Mouth is the counter itself, which is attached to the adjustable tension spring. Now there's not much to say about the counter because, well, it's just a counter. It has a small dial on one side that will turn the series of numbers from zero to nine. And this makes it quick and easy to reset it back to zero when you're ready for the next haul. And so the tension spring actually adjusts the counting flap resistance. And this can quickly be adjusted using a Phillips head screwdriver if and when needed. Inside the Mega Mouth is the famous flapper, which you're gonna get to know and love as you continue to drop fish after fish through it. So one thing that I wanna know is the reason that I opted for a taller style cooler the second time around when I ordered one of these is because I noticed when you put a two person limit of fish through this, the flapper will tend to get caught on the fish in the ice once those fish start getting stacked up. So the taller style cooler allows there to be more fish without it getting caught up on what's inside. So if you plan on chasing big numbers, and I'm talking 50 slabs or above, maybe consider getting a larger style cooler to better accommodate those numbers of fish. All right, so let's talk about mounting this thing. The first catch counter I purchased for my dad and we mounted that on the traditional wide style 48 quart igloo cooler. Then I bought a second catch counter which I mounted on a taller style 60 quart igloo Laguna cooler. And this has wheels and a, a handle you can pop up and roll it around so it's nice and convenient that way. And I use this one at home when I'm chasing larger numbers of specks and bluegills. And what's really great about the catch counter is the fact that you can mount it not only on a variety of coolers but also bucket lids and you can even mount it to your live well if you want to go super crazy with it. Now before I go too much further into mounting the catch counter, I do want to mention that you can purchase these pre-mounted. They offer them on both a 48 quart igloo cooler as well as a six gallon bucket. But if you've got other mounting ideas in mind like I did, you can purchase the Mega Mouth separate on its own. So with the proper tools and hardware, Mounting the catch counter is actually a piece of cake, but it is worth mentioning that the catch counter does not come with any mounting hardware. That means screws or washers. So I'd advise picking up some stainless screws and washers from your local hardware store if you don't have any laying around your garage. So as you can see, there are four holes for mounting around the lip of the catch counter, one on each side. I simply placed the bottom of the catch counter on top of the cooler where it best fit, where it wasn't overlapping either edge. And then I traced around that bottom circle with a pencil. Now, once I had my outline, I started a hole in the top of the cooler with a drill bit so I had my starting point for my jigsaw. And I just simply followed that line around with my jigsaw and then you have your mounting hole. Pop your catch counter on top and then you're ready to screw it down. And really that's about everything that I can share in terms of design and mounting this thing. It's just super simple. Now I will say one of my main concerns with this was how well it would actually hold ice as opposed to a regular cooler without one mounted on top. Because if you look, there's actually about a three quarter inch gap between the flapper and the outside of the chute where air can get in. But I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it really had little to no effect on how long the ice lasted inside the cooler. Because think about it, with a regular cooler, you're constantly opening and closing that large lid every time you have to throw a fish in. So you're exposing that ice to a lot more warm air. With the catch counter, you really have a split second where that fish is going through the chute 
and then it's back to business as usual. So the bottom line, it keeps ice just fine. And one last bit of advice I'd like to give on this is the particular way I prefer to keep ice inside these coolers. I found that making sort of an ice slushy is the best way to keep large numbers of fish cool evenly. Otherwise, what happens is you have a whole bunch of ice stacked on the bottom, and then you're stacking fish after fish after fish on top of that, and then you have no way to keep the top of the fish cool. And then at that point, you have to get your hands in there and mix it all around, and then you've got slime me hands and who wants to deal with that anyway ice slushy you'll thank me later so now that i've gone over the ins and outs of the catch counter you may be wondering where can you get your hands on one and how much will this cost me and so your best bet to grab a catch counter is just directly from their website catchcounter.com. Now I'm in Florida and I believe the only place that you can purchase one of these in person is Okeechobee Fishing Headquarters over in Okeechobee. So at the time of recording this video, you can scoop the catch counter for $64 plus shipping. And if you prefer to opt for one of the pre-mounted solutions, whether it's on a 48 quart cooler or on a six gallon bucket, those are both gonna be $100 plus shipping. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up my review of the catch counter. And again, I've been getting tons of questions on this since I added it to my arsenal but I wanted to spend at least a few months with it first before I give it an honest review. And again, if you're serious about putting numbers in the boat, whether it's crappie fishing, bluegill fishing, whatever, the catch counter really is a game changer. To not have to worry about keeping track of how many slabs you're throwing in the cooler throughout the day means more time for fishing. And that's really what it's all about, right? Anyway, I hope I covered everything in this video, but in case I didn't, or if you have any additional questions on the catch counter, drop me a comment below. So that's it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't considered subscribing already, please do. It helps me out and it helps the channel grow. And as always, have good times and tight lines.